Hello everybody! I'm going to be showcasing how to unlock the So Unbalanced achievement. So I've already gone out of my way to complete this achievement multiple times in a row so that I can gather some good and helpful tips for you. So the description reads, complete an adventure with the original party members and no recruits. So this means to just use the three party members that you start with. So if I was to start with Rayson, then that would be fine. I don't have to worry about starting with specifically the first three companions that you get throughout the entire game. I can use anybody that I want, as long as I don't get a fourth one. But I'm going to be using the same three that I always use. I know, boring, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be using other companions later. I just like using these starting three companions, particularly in Crumptex Dominion. So this achievement is not specific to any uh, level as long as it's not the tutorial, but it is um, much easier to do it here than anywhere else. So just uh, scrolling through the map here, I see the most uh, combat encounters are here at the bottom, whereas up here, there's um, not only two mandatory spider events, which is uh, true damage, easy to die there, but also just a lot of RNG. So that makes the choice pretty easy to go down here. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's begin the first combat encounter. So because you're not expected to have a fourth companion yet anyways, this uh, combat encounter should just be tackled the same way that you would any other combat encounter. So we're gonna do all the same uh, strategies. We're gonna count the uh, movement that these characters have and also the range. So he has uh, an, an effective range of six because he can move twice, then shoot uh, four spaces ahead. Because of that, I'm just going to keep Gerald here. Yeah, let all the enemies uh, get over here. Doesn't matter too much. Now I'm just going to move him a little bit further back. And then, hmm, between these options, yeah, might, might as well attack this one and then uh, see where, where luck lands me. Okay, good. So. Now that these enemies are burning, I can uh, apply Rooted to this one. That's the one that I want to apply Rooted to because the other one's just going to die in one hit. So let me uh, move the Ranger back. Yeah, move him all the way back, why not? So yeah, come on over here. Doesn't really matter too much. So now uh, Gerald is free to just... <clears throat> Ooh, wow, I really lost my voice there. He's free to just attack this guy. He's stunned, so he can't do anything. This guy is uh, rooted, but he's still going to attack. It's fine. So because uh, this orc here is going to uh, just attack Gerald right away, uh, I'm safe to just shoot him right away instead. Now between these options, uh, it's definitely... Hmm. It's definitely preferable to just like get him out of the way because the ranger doesn't deal that much damage anyways. So oddly enough, this guy got really close to try to attack him. Not sure why he did that, but whatever. So let's come over here and try to finish him off. Sure enough, didn't happen, doesn't matter. So between these two options, the uh, orc is definitely more important to finish off. So I'm gonna kill him. If there was a more effective way to distribute my damage, uh, I'll probably think about it later. It, it's probably to have uh, attacked this this archer with the poison arrow right away uh, and, and just bursted the orc down with my other damage sources. But who knows, maybe I would have gotten unlucky and he wouldn't have died anyways. So, okay, so we're gonna lose. <laughs> oh no, the wizard lost armor. So now his zero armor turned into zero armor. Kind of nostalgic because that happened to the ranger in a previous uh, run of this level. Okay, so here's another combat scenario, not too different from the previous one. So now, instead of, um... Well, yeah, I'm just gonna move up anyways. I was going to say, instead of uh, doing what I normally do, which is to uh, attack, or which is to move back, and only attack if uh, I can reach, I'm just gonna keep all these. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just gonna keep all my units towards the front. So yeah, he he took a little bit of damage, but it's fine. 
he'll uh he'll survive, he'll live. Now Gerald um currently is in range to get attacked by this guy, but he's going to die of poison uh the next turn. So I'd rather not let him use up damage yet. So because he can move one, two, and then not be in range anymore, I'm just gonna buff him with this. And let me finish off the goblin, then pull back. Okay, there you go, just pull back. Now I'm going to keep the uh, wizard over here too. So yeah, he's going to dive poison, and then all of these archers here are going to uh, try to attack Gerald. But it will be in vain. And this archer was really dumb, <laughs> because he moved up here into range of Gerald. So let's move further up. Now, I can uh, attack either one of these, but I'm guaranteed to kill this one because he's lost his armor already. Whereas uh, this one, I'm guaranteed to kill with the wizard because he still has armor, but the wizard deals good damage. Also, if he was still out of range for uh, whatever reason, because he, he moved in a different direction, the wizard could still snipe him. So yeah, let's summon the Verdant Defender right away. So this is our fourth companion, technically. Don't worry, though, this won't ruin the achievement. Now... Even though I have one less companion to worry about leveling up, I still won't be able to get to max level um, if I if I don't try to prioritize collecting more... Um, collecting... not collecting, but going to more nodes and collecting the XP from them. So there we go, got this. Now one thing to note is that once we come across the um, fourth companion, all we have to do is... Um, go through all the menus and then instead of hitting the button that's glowing here saying recruit we'll just confirm so the game knows that we have an empty hero slot but that's what we want so we can uh, accept a gift from the cultist now this is very handy uh oh, okay we've gained some extra armor there's also the option to gain um hold on let me let me cure gerald's exhaustion there's also the um, opportunity to gain extra damage at the cost of one max HP, but that didn't show up here. So between these two options, I'm going to level up the wizard. He gains his uh, damage here. So we, we have a <laughs> low chance of uh, making it out of here, but let's try to counter the blast. Wow, okay then, good. And now uh, Gerald is invigorated which means that I did not need to use the Exhausted Potion because the Invigoration would have uh, counteracted that and cured it. All right, so this is a pretty difficult combat scenario. There's a lot of enemies uh, to deal with here, some tough ones too. So something that I can do is uh, try to burst down this guy, well, the both of these guys. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to shoot him down and there you go, this will kill them both. Now, with the, this orc here, he's um, not going to be able to reach. The goblin, though, he has four movements. So one, two, three, four, right where uh, Gerald is at. And uh, he will be in range to attack the wizard if he moves up here. So in a way, I kind of have to tank. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put his shield on the wizard and take advantage of the fact that the wizard will eventually be able to um he'll he'll be able to deal good damage to this heavily armored orc here. So I'm just going to shoot this, stun uh this guy and light him on fire and then pull back. Just the one. So here we go. Here comes all these guys, but thankfully they're in the back, so staying over here allows us to not get swarmed and overwhelmed. So let me come up here, shoot this guy. There you go. So uh, he's still stunned, thankfully. And now I'm also able to uh, finish off this guy. Gerald uh, has the potential to deal only three damage with his attack. So uh, thankfully he was able to insta-kill that guy anyways. So now let me uh, shoot a, a poison arrow at this guy because he's the one that has the most armor. So yeah, here comes all this stuff. The uh, um, shaman there wasted his turn. 
with his healing. At least I think it's a waste. So yeah, let me push him back. There we go. Well, technically that's pushing him back, but he didn't actually get pushed back uh, because he just died straight up. Okay, so here comes these guys. Doesn't really matter too much. So now between these options, I can uh, shoot him, do some extra damage, and then Gerald will hopefully be able to finish him off. Or just uh, the Arcane Wizard will finish him off instead. That's also a possibility. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to um, move the Arcane Wizard in such a way that uh, the Shield of Retribution is going to be used up uh, next turn. So let me uh, move Gerald down here, and I'm going to buff himself with this. So now look, the enemy, they love to prioritize. Uh, they, they love to prioritize the hero instead of any other companions. But this guy will prioritize the Arcane Wizard and then get himself killed. And there we go, now we can finish this encounter. Boom, easy. So we played the enemies for fools and it paid off. And that was our uh, first combat with only uh, three companions after having already unlocked the option for more. So now I'm going to move up. Yeah, chances are that uh, something bad could happen here. Luckily it didn't, and I'm invigorated now. So let's come up to the tavern. So I can talk to the patrons and get some, uh, some either helpful tips or just uh, um, puns from them. Yeah, sorry, for some reason I can't think of the word. I'm recording this kind of late at night. I'm about to go to sleep. It is my bedtime. But I wanted to um, record this video first. So, there we go. Party got uh, damaged a little bit, so let's go down to this node and see if we get damaged even more. Let's gather some berries. Okay, good. Nothing bad happened. Gained one max HP. That's always nice to see. So now between my options, I'm definitely going to go for a uh, Avenging Blade because that's Gerald's best skill. His um, AoE attack, the second ability, is also pretty good when you have a limited party because you can deal with multiple enemies, but I prefer it like this. So now with, uh, with my remaining options to either buff Gerald again, buff the Ranger, or to buff the Arcane Wizard, I'm definitely going to buff the uh, Ranger, especially because he's invigorated right now. Ricochet is going to do a lot of good for us. So between these two options, I would either have uh, this one node, and then one of these other two nodes here, the yellow or the purple, or I can have one node plus another node, plus then the purple node. So I will lose the opportunity to go to the shop, but I will get to um, get more experience points. So let's gift the tent, and now I'm going to have more luck for uh, future dice events that will happen on the way up here. And this is important because when you don't have a fourth companion, you will only get uh, luck-based and choice-based events instead of uh, additional combat encounters, which is very handy. So now this uh, Orc Archer, once again, six range. So one, two, and then three, four, five, six. So he will be in range to attack him. So let me just move Gerald up here and then be ready to tank that upcoming attack. So let me uh, move the ranger over here. And then summon the dog. And I'm going to have this dog. Uh, yeah, see, I am one, two, three, four spaces away from this uh, orc here. So I'm still safe. And there we go, I was able to finish that guy off. And now let me just uh, move him over here, and then uh, deal damage to him. So this guy's going to get instant killed. He's, he's gonna um, kill himself, I should say, with his next attack. So yeah, do your powerful move, and then <laughs> deal 6 damage to yourself. Very genius play there, on his part. So now I can... Uh, Move over here, and this uh, enemy, he put himself at a disadvantage by pursuing the dog, 
So now I'm free to just snipe this enemy with no repercussions. So now I'm not in range to um, attack this guy with my regular move. So I'm going to shoot him with this. It's fine with me because um, that means I can give it another opportunity to recharge. So there we go. Now while I have the chance, I'm going to move over here and keep myself out of range of that other enemy. And then move up here, attack him. And now if I really want to, I can come over here and then freeze this guy. And there we go. Now he really can't fight back. So yeah, I'm just going to buff Gerald while I have the chance. Uh, I'll keep the ranger in place. Keep the wizard as well. So he's still frozen. Now here we go. Attack him. Archer attack him too. There we go. So now he's totally dead. I, uh really abused him there because he wouldn't have been in range to attack Gerald. Okay, there we go. So now let's let's move on ahead. And because we're all uh, blessed from gifting the tent, all these luck-based events, uh, we have a better chance of winning them. Exhibit A. So let's come up here, and I'm really close to being able to level up another companion. And so given those two options, I'm definitely going to level up Gerald to give him more damage. Now, here we go. So this is a an encounter that makes me happy that I leveled up the ranger because look at all these ranged enemies. This is definitely going to be a, a tricky one, especially since we're expected to have um, more companions by this point. So let's uh, just back off, do some damage to this guy. Quite a, quite a bit of damage too, which is nice to see. Move Gerald up, put this on. There you go, so this guy will move up. The ranger is no longer blessed. So I have the option to either uh, use the dog right now or just uh, finish this guy off. So I'm, I'm going to finish him off. And then uh, once again, move back. See, so here we go. Here comes all these guys. Still not in range to attack Gerald, which is nice. All right, here we go. So now I actually am in a position where I can attack these guys more freely. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move Gerald up. He's probably going to tank an attack from one of these uh, witch doctors or uh, shamans. Let me check his name real quick so that way I don't confuse it. Yeah, orc shaman. So let me just move up here. And then this one has his turn next. So I'm just gonna attack him. Yeah, so he's gonna waste his turn healing himself but stay in that position. And then this guy, he's gonna, oh, okay. So he went for the, uh... he went for the dog instead of uh, Gerald. Fine with me. Okay, so uh, this guy has his turn coming up next, but one, two, he's he's not going to be in range to attack uh, the wizard, so let me just uh, blast him. There we go, so Gerald, I'm going to move him down here, attack this guy. Now look at all my options. I'm going to move down here, and then uh, take out this wizard as well, because he deals um, magic damage. And I'd rather have uh, Jill take damage to his armor. Now, of course, he's still going to lose some HP, but just not as much. Now, if I move the wizard up here, there's a chance that he could get uh, attacked by the orc. So instead, I'm going to move him down here and then uh, try to finish this guy off. So I do have a 1 in 4 chance of not being able to do that, but it was all good. So now, Gerald can make use of um, Avenging Blade. So let's finish him off with, with a dab. There you go, 12 damage, wow. So now if I just uh, move further up ahead, I will be able to attack this guy. Now this is kind of risky, so I'm going to move down here so I'm safe. And then there we go, so this guy's going to attack Gerald again. Wizard, do some damage to him, good. So now Gerald is more likely to be able to uh, just finish him off with the dab, and sure enough he was. And we have full HP. So all's well that ends well. On top of that, now I will be able to level up Gerald. But of course, I'm going to wait and come up here first. Yeah, let's tell a story. Story time. Got unlucky. And nothing major happened. So what I'm going to do is use the tent. So we're uh, revitalized. Gerald has um, additional um, <laughs> max HP, which is always nice to see. 
so now we're at this uh, altar of Alini. As far as I know, this is guaranteed to be here. So I'm going to take the prayer of vigor and get uh, a hero invigorated. Now, Gerald being invigorated is the best thing that could happen. So now I'm going to take the extra movement speed. Uh, that's what Rally does. And proceed on ahead. So the extra movement speed is really handy for Gerald. Um, because it doesn't cost him any exp uh, HP. And on top of that, it will buff his other allies. So that way they're more versatile as well. And we can try to burst down the boss. So, <laughs> with only three companions to take on the boss fight this will be a little bit more challenging which is always fun to do it's um still possible to one shot this boss as well so that's something that i might uh that i might be able to pull off here depending on how things go so because of the uh move order here with the uh, the archers i need to i need to protect gerald so that's what i'm going to do protect him now my this is my one chance to uh to use a full action without the lightning getting in the way the only other chance i will get is if um i can protect myself with another shield of retribution but that's not an option just yet so with this uh range here i'm already able to attack this guy but i'm not gonna um attack him just yet so i'm gonna move back and then uh attack him here so, yeah, that, that did one damage to the other uh, enemy, but whatever, every bit counts. So yeah, come on over, take even more damage. So now this guy's uh, gonna waste his turn healing him, and that also means that the Orc Shaman is not going to be able to heal again, because he's got an ability on cooldown. Okay, so let's uh, take out the Archer. There we go. Now let's also, uh, I can take out this archer. Yeah, I'm going to take out this archer. The other option that I would have had would be to move one down and then attack, but then I wouldn't be able to move out of range of the lightning, which isn't good. So let's move this wizard up here and then deal some more uh, armor piercing damage to him. So luckily this guy is going to prioritize uh, Gerald, so the wizard is safe even being in this spot. Now, I might eat my words, because, uh, nope. I, I wouldn't eat my words, because, uh, by saying that I might eat my words, it, it caused me to, um, change what I was saying, and therefore, the thing that would make me wrong is if he didn't go for the wizard anymore. So, good thing I said that. Okay, uh, I might as well just attack him with the dab, because it does more damage than his regular attack. Now, this guy is safe, so I'm just going to uh, hit both of these guys here. There we go. Now, I'm not really in a good position either way, so let me just uh, move back and then attack him. Yeah, finish him off. Yeah, use up your Thunderbolt, it's fine. So Gerald is going to take some HP damage from the Witch Doctor, the Orc Shaman. I keep calling him the Witch Doctor, but that's fine. Like, go ahead, da damage him all you want. He's got Invigoration with Vengeful Blade, which is the best possible thing. So let me move him down here, and look at this. 15 damage. He can deal 15 damage. Uh, I'm not going to deal uh, 15 damage just yet. In fact, I'm going to move down here and then attack this one. Then I'm going to move down here, and then uh, shoot this guy. And then finally... I'm going to move down here and freeze him. So freezing him doesn't really do that much good because he's just going to be protected from uh, the lightning. You see there, he took no damage, and now he's going to come up here and deal more damage to Gerald. Well, not that much more damage, but still some. So now let me move him up here. And, uh... Hmm... Nah, I'm not going to do that. I could buff his speed, but he's he's in a good enough spot anyways, especially because he's invigorated. Now, because of um, the fact that there's not a lightning on the ranger, I can just uh, summon the dog freely without him getting hit. 
And on top of that, I can move the wizard over here and then finish off this guy. So there we go. Now the boss is going to spawn down here. And uh, Gerald is going to be able to use Ventral Blade on the boss, which is going to deal a ton of damage. Okay, skip the cutscene. I'm too excited to wait. Please show up in range. Oh no, don't tell me he's not in range. Oh, Gerald. Well, if only he had used uh, Rally. Well, whatever. So even though I'm uh, in the Lightning Blasts, let me just uh, move over here. Now I can use a uh, rally. So there we go. Shoot him down. Then move all the way up here. Now look at how much movement the dog has. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Just beautiful. Taking up the whole map. Five movement. <laughs> okay, so that guy's going to turn into an abomination. Whatever. So I'm going to move down here. And I'm not able to uh, shoot him, so I'm just going to blast him with all these attacks. Yeah, yeah, turn into an abomination. Doesn't really matter. So, the next turn, Krumpthak is uh, definitely dead. Yeah, come on, hurry up. He's probably going to spawn on the right, if I could make a guess. Okay, good. So now I, I forced him to spawn on the left, so that he I could be wrong again. So now let me uh, move Gerald. I'm just going to move him up here. Now let's use Ventral Blade, 16 damage now, so boom, 16 damage, move the Ranger back, hit him, and there we go, 7 damage. So that was already a uh, overkill, but I could also have hit him with the Wolf, which would have done an additional 2 to 4 damage, and then I could have hit him with the Wizard, which would have done an additional 6 damage, so this boss was uh, long dead. So even though I only had my three companions, and I didn't even have them all at um, level three, because imagine if I had Disintegrate on the Arcane Wizard, then things would be going even better. But even under those uh, limited conditions, this was a cakewalk. Nobody died. Uh, it, was, it was somewhat lucky because of all the things that happened to me. But in my previous runs here, I got pretty bad luck and was able to do this just fine because I was using all the strategies that you should use um, no matter what.